Rev up your engine! Tyler Thompson says, if I take the mufflers off my car, will it still pass emissions? Well, yes, but if you take the muffler off, the muffler doesn't affect the emissions. The catalytic converter, which is what burns hydrocarbons, that stops emissions. Mufflers just stop noise. Now, in most states, if you remove the muffler, it's no longer legal to pass the state yearly inspection because it's making too much noise. Some states, like New York, California, they have decibel limits and they can get a decibel meter sticking three feet from the tailpipe and if it's too loud they can fail you. Here in Texas they don't have a decibel rating, they have a, you just can't make too much noise so it's up to the discretion of the guy who's testing the vehicle and if he doesn't like loud noises he can fail it because if he looks and sees there's no muffler, technically you do have to have a muffler on it. I mean you can get a muffler that has nothing in it sticking on there just to look at it. but they can test the noise if they want to. Seriously slushy 98 says Scotty is Denise Nissan Murano 2015 a good SUV not really not unless it's really low mileage the thing about the Nissan SUVs are they go pretty fast and they handle quite well but they become money pits as they age now if you bought a brand new Nissan Murano and kept it for less than 100,000 miles you may not have any problem with it at all so if you're looking at a used one it's got 50 60k get it cheap enough it can be an okay car let's say it's got 100 120,000 miles it's entering the realm of the endless money pit and you would never want to buy one of those things. I don't have a single customer who ever bought a Murano and kept it more than 120,000 miles that didn't end up hating the vehicle. So keep all that in mind. Find a little mileage one cheap enough Go ahead, just realize it isn't going to last like a Toyota or a Honda. Narcisco Reyes says, Scotty, what do you think of a Toyota pickup 86, 168,000 miles? Well, it's old as the hills, but if they could prove that's the real mileage, you could still have a lot of life in it. That said, it's so old, you don't pay too much money for one. But I've seen them with 350, 450,000 miles, and they're still running strong, especially if they have the standard transmission in them. The automatics were okay, but they were a lot slower. With the standard they're decent running vehicles. And if you can find one that prove that's the real mileage, yeah, go ahead and buy it. Just don't pay too much. It's so old. You know, the thing's 24 years old. You're not going to pay a bunch of money for 24 old anything, really. Cup WDI says, Scotty, I have a 2016 Honda Accord V6. The car jerks when I shift from park to reverse or drive. Had a transmission fluid change. It still jerks. Should I be concerned? Okay. First thing you do is check the drive shafts. If the CV joints on the ends of the drive shaft are worn, it'll clunk and jerk. You can get brand new aftermarket ones for like a hundred bucks a piece. Go ahead and replace them if that's the case. Also, watch my video, How to Replace Motor Mounts in Your Cars. It also shows how to check them. You put a jack under the oil pan with a piece of 2 by 4 jack it up, and if the engine raises up and the body doesn't immediately foul, look at the mounts, and if they're separating, you need new motor mounts. Now, if it's neither of those and it's just the transmission, live with it. You have to rebuild the transmission. And on a V6 2016 Honda Accord, a true rebuild costs you anywhere from $3,600 to $5,600. They're not cheap to work on. They're very complicated. Michael Turner says, is an 8-speed auto tranny better than a six speed depends on who makes them <laughs> now that german company zf they make an eight speed that's called eight hp which stands for eight speed high performance 2017 they sold 3.1 million of those transmissions worldwide to manufacturers they're excellent transmissions you look at some of the american eight speed transmissions they're piles of crap and they fall apart so it depends who makes them now of course eight speeds more complicated than six but eight gets better gas mileage than six it seems that 10 for some things might be too many gears and you really don't even get better gas mileage and they weigh more because they got extra gears maybe eight speeds is the best design of them all overall if it's made right like the zf or like the toyota in the uh rav4 trd that i tried out a couple weeks ago that added eight speed it was an immaculate transmission so depends who makes them <laughs> tom dog says hey scotty why do chevy suck well because they don't spend enough money making them. They're trying to make as much profit, maximize profit, lower the cost of production, pay your workers less, and that's what the end result is. When I was a kid, they made great cars. I learned how to drive in a Chevy Biscayne. But even then, you always had to work on them. I remember 20 years ago, my father was still alive. He said, you know, thanks for telling me to buy that Toyota Corolla. He said, it's the best car I ever had. Never do anything to change the oil. I said, yeah, but when we were young, you had all the Chevys and Fords. And he said, yeah, but your grandfather was always working on them, fixing stuff. Even back then, they were nothing compared to the Toyotas and Hondas that are made today. And their quality from then has gone downhill so that's why they suck Caesar she says hey Scotty what's the best sporty sedan depends on how much you want to spend 
<laughs> but any of the Lexuses are really nice, as are the Acura four doors. Now, the Infinities are really fun to drive and zippy, but as they get over 100,000 miles, they tend to fall apart and become endless money pits. But if you're the type of guy that you buy a car and get rid of it before 100,000 miles, you'd probably be happy with an Infinity Sports sedan. I worked on one the other day and it only had 60,000 miles. It still ran like a clock. It was a fun car to drive around, but it's not going to last. Acura or a Lexus or a Toyota or a Honda will last by any stretch of the imagination. Richard Valadez says, Scotty, I'm driving an 07 V8 Charger on its last leg. Should I get a V6 Camry or a four-cylinder Camry or Honda Accord? Lucky for longevity here, but I have a lead foot. Okay, buy what I was driving the other day. Buy the Toyota Camry TRD, Toyota Racing. It was fun to drive. It had lowered suspension a little and the back was raised a little and it's got a nice stiff body. The back, there's no hole for the seats to flip over for the trunk to open up space. It's all solid welded steel in there. They have like 67% less lateral roll than a conventional Camry. Try one out. You would like it and they last because it's a Camry. And the funny thing is it's fast but it's actually cheaper than the luxury Camry for the speedy engine because they set it up that way. It's not an uber expensive one. The one I was driving around was like $35,000 and it was fun and it will last. Jorge Camacho says, what is rev hang? That's when your rev tachometer sticks at higher RPMs and it's sticking at high RPM. If you've got a dirty throttle and the carbon has built up on it, it will physically stick there and it'll rev high. But more often in modern cars, that's all controlled by computers. So you could have a sensor or computer failure where it's giving the wrong data and it's making it stick up there. Or with a lot of cars like piece of crap Chryslers, you can get rev hanging because the transmissions are falling apart and they stay at a high RPM because they won't shift gear anymore. I see that an awful lot in Chryslers as they wear out these days. They get the rev hang because the transmission's stuck in the lower gear and won't shift up so it stays real high and hangs at the high RPMs which is of course bad for your engine and your gas mileage. Carl Aronson says, Scotty, what do you think about a Lotus Elise? All right, I've driven them. I've even worked on them. There's a dealer down the street and you realize they have Toyota engines in them. Now the English realized, nah, sir, we can't build engines very well here, so let's buy them from the Japanese. <laughs> so they bought their engines from Toyota. So they're very reliable engines. They're rich men's toys. They're very expensive vehicles. And as any elitist car, they have very bad resale value. So if you can find one that doesn't have the heck beat out of it and has lower mileage, buy a used one, you'll save a ton of money. They are fun. They handle like a dream, but they're rich men's toys. So you better have some serious scratch if you're going to buy one. Don't think you're going to get cheap parts and even a used one with you know some miles on it's still not going to be dirt cheap luxury cars for rich people your mom three says scotty what do you think of saab i know more about saab probably bore you to death for five hours if i told you everything they were an oddball car manufacturer you know saab scan yeah they made the fighter jets but they started out as little puddle jumpers they were interesting cars my physics teacher in high school mr philby had one and he had a v4 not a straight four a v4 they made them bigger and better and faster over the years but they were always an oddball car i had a lot of customers of mine strangely enough they were architects and architects are kind of strange people have you ever met any and they seemed to like they seem to gravitate towards them I had one customer was an architect that he used his credit card to buy a Saab just to say oh look I bought my Saab with my credit card I mean but the company went bankrupt because they were over engineered pieces of junk as they age cost a fortune to fix here in Houston the Saab dealership they were shut down by Saab and Saab company took it over and ran it but then the whole company went out of business they shut everything down so that kind of tells you they weren't the greatest cars they don't make them anymore the Chinese actually had bought Saab but I guess the Saab people that Griffin there's insignia was a family insignia a Norse insignia and they refused to give that to the Chinese so the Chinese said Pfft. and then they don't make them anymore the Chinese decided they weren't going to build Saabs they bought Volvo instead I guess they're into Swedish you know that maybe they like Swedes for some reason TB Metier says what's a good sports bike for a beginner I'm into sports bike is great handling and quick acceleration uh, any of the Japanese ones they're so well made and you're talking about being a beginner now even the 600 cc Japanese sports bikes have insane acceleration you might try one of those Kawasaki 400s they're reasonably fast but they're not insane you get up to the 600 four cylinder ones insane speed machines they just go and you might not be able to handle it you could easily kill yourself You'd be better with like one of those Kawasaki Ninja jobs. Maybe even look at the 250s. They're pretty fast too. They're not that slow. Maybe the 400, but I wouldn't even go to a 600 to begin with because man, those things, they have more power than most guys can handle if they're a beginner. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.